Autosys Workload Automation Troubleshooting In this module, we will cover troubleshooting common Autosys workload automation problems, including symptoms and possible solutions. How to access the Autosys workload automation components logs. The Autosys workload automation communication ports that should be open to avoid communication problems. Let's start troubleshooting some common errors encountered during the Autosys workload automation server definition in Autosys web UI. Wrong encryption type and key. Let's start with a problem due to using the wrong encryption type and key. We have created a server in Autosys Web UI with the encryption type value set to default. When we validate the server, we receive the following message. Connection exception encountered. Failed to get initial configuration from Autosys application server. We use the autosys log command with the S option to display the application server log to get more information about what is happening. The server log displays an error message indicating a key mismatch. The server was created in the autosys web UI using the default key as the encryption key. However, autosys instance-wide encryption was configured with a custom AES key, resulting in a key mismatch. To solve the problem, change the encryption type field to AES in the server definition on the Autosys web UI. And enter the instance-wide encryption AES custom key that Autosys workload automation is using. Save the server definition. Let's confirm our solution has solved the problem. We validated the server again, and this time the validation was successful. The application server log shows the session was established. We solved the problem by changing the encryption type to AES and using the custom AES key. See SAM configuration error. Let's see another error we can get during server validation. We created a server and during validation, we got the following error. CSAM is not configured properly for the port 9000. It appears that there may be an issue with the configuration of the secure socket adapter, SSA, for port 9000 between the web UI and the application server. Follow the steps below to verify and configure the SSA. Go to the CSAM SOC adapter bin directory on the web UI and application server computers. Run the following command on the web UI and the application server. CSAM config edit, followed by port equals and the port number, in this case 9000, and the display option. Check the output of these commands and look for the parameters enable SSL and enable PMUX. The values must be identical on both, the web UI and the application server. If they aren't identical, you can change the values using the same command followed by the parameter and value you want to set. We executed the csam config edit command on the web UI in the application server to display the definitions of the parameters for port 9000. And we notice the parameter enable pmux value is not the same on the web UI and application server. To solve the problem, we execute the command on the web UI server to set the parameter enable pmux to true to match the parameter value in the application server. To confirm that we have resolved the issue, we validated the server again on the web UI. Now we receive the message the CSAM is configured properly for port 9000, and the server was validated successfully. Let's now review some agent communication problems. First, we will review a connectivity problem between the Autosys agent 
and the server due to blocked ports. We execute the following autorep command to know the status of the agent machine. autorep m and the name of the agent machine APPL2-W. The agent appears in missing status. To identify why the agent appears missing, we first execute an auto ping command on the autosys server to verify that the server and agent are communicating successfully. The command is auto ping minus m followed by the agent machine name. The auto ping was not successful. There is some connectivity problem between the server and the agent computer. On the autosys server, we execute a ping command to the agent computer to verify connectivity. The ping was successful, indicating network connectivity between the server and the agent. However, there seems to be an issue preventing the communication between the two components. Let's verify the agent is running. If your autosys workload automation is on Windows, Open the AutoSys Workload Automation Administrator on the agent server and verify if the agent service is started. The agent is started. If your AutoSys Workload Automation is on Linux, enter the following command on the agent server to know the status of the agent. Uni SRV CNTR status, WAAE underscore agent, and the name of the agent. WA underscore agent. In our example, the agent is running. Let's now verify the port, agent name, and encryption match on the agent machine definition and the agent PARM file on the agent computer. The port and agent name must match. When the encryption type in the machine definition is different from none, the security crypt key parameter in the agent PARM file must reference the cryptkey.txt file. We confirm that the parameters on the agent machine definition and agent PARM file are correct. Now let's verify if port 7520 is open. The application server and scheduler use this port to connect to the agent. From the AutoSys workload automation server, execute a telnet or TNC command with the agent computer name and port 7520 to check if the port is open. The command failed. There is no communication with the agent computer using port 7520. Configure the application server and scheduler firewall to allow outgoing communication and the agent firewall to allow incoming communication through port 7520. We execute again the auto ping command from the autosys server to verify the connectivity with the agent, but there are still communication problems with the agent. We review the agent log files on the agent server for related errors. In the transmitter log file, there are error messages indicating the agent is trying to communicate with the server through ports 7507 and 7500 without success. These ports must be opened on the AutoSys workload automation server. The agent uses port 7500 to connect to the application server and port 7507 to connect to the scheduler. To prevent communication problems, configure the application server firewall to allow incoming communication and the agent firewall to allow outgoing communication through port 7500. Also, configure the scheduler server firewall to allow incoming communication and the agent firewall to allow outgoing communication through port 7507. Once the port's configuration is completed, we execute again the auto ping command from the autosys server to verify the connectivity with the agent. The auto ping was successful. We now have full communication between the autosys server and the agent. To confirm that the problem has been resolved, we executed the autorep command again to verify the status of the agent machine, which is now online. In addition, we submit a job to run on the agent, which completes successfully.
Now let's solve another agent communication problem. A job has been sent for execution but remains in restart RE, status. On Windows, open the AutoSys Workload Automation Administrator on the Agent Server and check the Agent Service status. The Agent Service is stopped. Click the Start button to start the Agent Service. The Agent Service has started. If your agent is on Linux, from a command prompt, execute the following command to check the agent service status. Uni SRV CNTR status, WAAE underscore agent, and the name of the agent, WA underscore agent. The agent service is not active. To start the agent service, execute again the command, but this time with the start option. Uni SRV CNTR start, WAAE underscore agent, and the name of the agent, WA underscore agent. The agent service has started. Let's now validate if after starting the agent the problem was solved. Execute the command autosys log with the S option on the autosys workload automation server to display the scheduler log. The log indicates that the connection with the agent machine has been established and the job has been completed. Now we are going to review some problems related to Autosys web services. The next example is a problem regarding the privileges of the monitor ID user when defining a server in the Autosys web UI. After creating a server on the Autosys web UI, we attempted to validate it and received the following error. Web services validation. A connection exception was encountered. The web services URL validation fails with status code 403. The error is due to the monitor user of the Autosys server does not have the required CAEEM permissions on the Autosys web service. We log into CAEM and validate whether the user AE monitor, which is the monitor ID user defined in the server on the web UI, has been assigned to the workload automation AE web service application group. The user AE monitor is not in the group. The group workload automation AE web service is the group that controls access to web services. To solve the problem, we must ensure that the monitor user belongs to the Workload Automation AE Web Service Application Group. We add the user to the group. We validate the server again on the Autosys Web UI to verify the problem has been solved. The validation was completed successfully. We solved the problem by assigning the monitor user to the Workload Automation AE Web Service Application Group. Web Services Port Closed We will now troubleshoot a problem with the Web Services Port. We created a server and attempted to validate it, but encountered the following error. Web Services Validation Connection Exception was encountered. Connection timed out. The problem could be that the communication port used by the Autosys web server is blocked. In our demo environment, the web server's listening port is 9445. The installation default port is 9443. We check if port 9445 is open on the Autosys workload automation server firewall. The port is not opened. To prevent communication problems, we must configure the firewalls to allow outgoing and incoming communication to the Autosys web server listening port. We open the 9445 port in the firewall. To confirm that the problem has been resolved, we validate the server again after opening the web server port. This time, the validation was successful.
Let's see now a problem where the communication with the application server failed from a client. On a client machine, we execute a chk underscore auto underscore up command and get a message indicating the communication with the autosys application server has failed. The problem could be due to a misconfiguration of the secure socket adapter, SSA, for port 9000 between the client and the application server. Follow these steps to verify and configure the SSA. Go to the CSAM SOC adapter bin directory on the client and application server computers. Run the following command on the client and the application server. CSAM config edit, followed by port equals and the port number, in this case 9000, and the display option. Check the output of these commands and look for the parameters enable SSL and enable PMUX. The values must be identical on both, the client and the application server. If they aren't identical, you can change the values using the same command followed by the parameter and value you want to set. We executed the csam config edit command on the client and the application server to display the definitions of the parameters for port 9000. And we notice the parameter enable pmux value is not the same on the client and the application server. To solve the problem, we execute the command on the client to set the parameter enable pmux to true to match the parameter value in the application server. To confirm that we solved the problem, we executed the chk underscore auto underscore up command on the client again. As a result, the connection with the application server was established and the command executed successfully. This section will show how to display the AutoSys components logs and where they are located. To view the scheduler log file, execute the AutoSys log command with the E option. By default, the log files are located in these directories on Windows and Linux. To view the application server log file, execute the AutoSys log command with the S option. By default, the log files are in these directories on Windows and Linux. You can find the AutoSys web services logs in these directories on Windows and Linux. To view the log files, you can choose your preferred method for viewing files on Linux or Windows. AutoSys web UI logs. By default, the AutoSys web UI log file is in the following directories on Linux and Windows. AutoSys Web UI includes logging for all its applications. Log files are in the following directory on Windows and Linux. Each application subfolder contains a log4j2.xml file that controls logging settings. Logging levels are set to info or error by default. To view the log files, you can choose your preferred method for viewing files on Linux or Windows. Troubleshoot database connection problems. Oracle connection. Ensure you can connect through the Oracle default port 1521 or the port you defined during the database connection setup. Use the SQL plus command and log in with the system or sysadmin users to validate the connection to the database. Use the SQL plus command to log into the database with the users created for AutoSys to test if they can log in. The default AutoSys users created during installation are the schema owners, AEDB admin for AutoSys engine and WCC admin for web UI, and the database users, AutoSys for AutoSys engine and WCC user for web UI. Microsoft SQL Server Connection 
Ensure you can connect through the Microsoft SQL Server default port 1433 or the port you define during the database connection setup. Use the SQL CMD command and log in with the SA user to validate the connection to the database. Use the SQL CMD command to log into the database with the users created for Autosys to test if they can log in. The default user for the Autosys workload automation engine is Autosys, while the default user for the Autosys web UI is WCC user. These are the Autosys workload automation default communication ports. To prevent communication problems, configure the firewall to allow incoming, outgoing, or both types of communication through the designated ports. The 7163 is a static port and must not be changed. The remaining ports may vary under the allowed ranges depending on the ports currently in use on your network. This is an Autosys workload automation default communication ports diagram. The DB port is the port you have defined to communicate with the database. In this module, we have learned how to troubleshoot common problems in Autosys workload automation, including identifying symptoms and possible solutions. It is essential to know how to access and search for information in Autosys workload automation logs for effective troubleshooting. The default communication ports that Autosys workload automation uses. The ports must be open to avoid communication problems. Refer to the following documentation for detailed Autosys workload automation troubleshooting.